أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأهلة قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج وليس البر بأن تأتوا البيوت من ظهورها ولكن البر من اتقى وأتوا البيوت من أبوابها واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون وقاتلوا في سبيل الله الذين يقاتلونكم ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين واقتلوهم حيث سقفتموهم وأخرجوهم من حيث أخرجوكم والفتنة أشد من القتل ولا تقاتلوهم عند المسجد الحرام حتى يقاتلوكم فيه فإن قاتلوكم فاقتلوهم كذلك جزاء الكافرين فإن انتهوا فإن الله غفور رحيم وقاتلوهم حتى لا تكون فتنة ويكون الدين لله فإن انتهوا فلا عدوان إلا على الظالمين صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى فتقبل منا فإنك خير المتقبلين آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Tonight we are proceeding with the 24th section of Surah Al-Baqarah As I have told you more than one times this Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the biggest and the greatest Surah of the Qur'an, is divided, is divisible into two parts. First part comprising of 18 sections or 152 ayat, in which the main address was to the Bani Israel, to the former Muslim Ummah. The second part that started from the 19th section, and this will go on till the end of the surah. In this part, only a very brief reference was in the 19th section to the Jews. And then in the 20th section, there was some reference to the pagan Arabs, to the idolaters of Arabia. Rest of the whole surah is addressed now towards the Muslims, the Muslim Ummah. And there are four threads of subjects or topics which are interwoven, wound round each other. That is why we feel they are broken, but they are not broken. Actually, the threads are continuous. The four threads are two concerning the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here we'll find that the blueprint of the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the divine law of Islam, that is prepared in this part of the surah. But the sharia contains two parts. Firstly, ibadat, modes of worship. We'll find a brief reference to prayers, salah, then the detailed discussion about psalm we have studied last night. Today we are going to study a very detailed discussion about hajj, 
and its rites and rituals. The second is Muamalat, the social affairs of the community. A few references have already come regarding the law of equitable retribution in cases of murder, regarding, you know, inheritance, the preliminary instruction about inheritance, and so on. But now you will see in the sections that we will be studying today, repeatedly, the ayat will start, Ya Salunak, Ya Salunak, Ya Salunak. Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are asking you, they are asking you, they are asking you about the orphans, they are asking you about wine, they are asking you about gambling, they are asking you about the menstruation, the period of, of women, etc., etc. Because, you know, now it was a society of the Muslims, their own society. And now, you know, all the rules and regulations are being given. And there was an urge in the people themselves to know what we should do. So question after question and we shall be getting the answers. The other two strands or threads of the topics, they are the two aspects of jihad fi sabirillah. And here we find that the jihad now has converted into qital. For twelve long years at Makkah it was jihad. It was not an armed conflict. It was jihad bil Quran. Wajahidhum bihi jihad and kabira. But now you know this jihad has turned into qital. Going to war for the cause of Allah. Fighting the kuffar who were obstructing the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So qital fi sabirillah. And for qital you always need funds, money. Because for the armor also and all the other needs for going to war, you need, you know, money. So infaq fi sabirillah. These two strands, qital fi sabirillah, infaq fi sabirillah. And these four strands are wound round each other or interwoven and we shall find that once one subject is discussed, then the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one and so on. So they seem to be interrupted, but actually they are continuous. Yasaluna kanil ahillah. Here, the same question. They are asking you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the new moons. Kul hiya mawaki to linnas. Tell them, they are for reckoning the periods of times for the people. This is the calendar, the natural calendar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to whole of humanity. Citing the moon, you can see whether half of the month has passed or the third of the month has passed. So it is actually the natural calendar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided. Yes, قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ hajj, And especially because hajj was the most important phenomenon in Arabia. And it was performed in definite months, in definite, on definite dates. So this importance of the calendar was mostly for hajj. وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْقَاتُ الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ زُهُورِهَا And this is no charity, this is no virtue, that you enter your houses from the backs. It was a wrong practice of the Arabs, of Bakka, that once they took to Ihram for hajj, and they came out of their houses, now if there was some need to go back, they, they thought that we can't now enter our homes from the front doors. So they used to climb the behind walls and then jump into the houses. Because we are now in Ahram, we can't enter our houses. So these were actually their own self-made ideas. So Quran is telling us it has no basis. It's no virtue that you come to your houses from their backs. The real virtue, the real charity of the person who has real taqwa, who is really pious, who is really God-fearing, who really wants, wants to save him from all evil. No harm if you have taken to Ihram, but if there is need to return to your homes, you can enter your homes through the front doors. But have taqwa of Allah, have regard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can prosper. And now with the just mention in one ayah of Hajj, we find the discussion of Qital fi sabirillah. What's the logical relationship? Hajj could be performed only at Makkah 
And Makkah was under the control of the non-believers, the Mushrikeen, the Kuffar. So it had to be liberated. And for getting Makkah liberated from the clutches of the Kuffar, Muslims had to go to war. There is no other way, no alternative, no possible method. That is why just mentioning Hajj, and then you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switches towards Qital fi sabirillah, and then you know detailed discussion about Hajj will, will follow. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ And go to war, fight those in the cause of Allah who are fighting you. وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا But don't transgress the limits, the limits of decency, the limits, limits of morality that must be kept. There are laws in Islam. You are not free to do whatever you like to do against your enemy. You can't kill the old people, the sick people, the women. You can't burn trees. You can't burn the fields, the harvest, no. So you have to observe the rules and regulations based, based on moral law. This is the first ayah mentioning and so to so prescribing qital fi sabilillah to the Muslims. وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا But don't transgress the limits. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Verily, Allah doesn't like those who transgress the limits. وَقْتِلُوهُمْ حَيْسُ ثَقِفْتَمُوهُ Kill them, wherever you find them. These are very strong words. Because actually, they had done all, you know, persecution to the Muslims for, for at least eight years. They had turned them out from Makkah. The Muslims had to leave Makkah. They had to leave their homes and hearts. They had to leave their families at the mercy of the wolves of Makkah. So actually, now the Muslims had every moral right to retaliate. Up till that time, they were stopped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to retaliate. That's a different issue. It's the wisdom of the revolutionary process of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now that phase has started. So don't hesitate in killing. This is necessary. Just as a surgeon, you know, he cuts off the arm or the, or the leg of a person because it has become venomous. If you don't chop it off, if you don't cut it off, maybe the whole body goes, you know. So here actually, Kill them wherever you find them. And turn them out from where they have turned you out. They have turned you out from Mecca. You turn them out from Makkah. Well, fitna to ashaddu min al-qatl. And fitna is worse than qatl. Why is it being said? Because yet there are some people, and there were some people, and there will always be some people, good-natured or weak in personality, who would say, it's no good going to war. It's, you know, shedding blood is no good. We should refrain as much as we can. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, go. Oh, well, fitna to ashaddu min al-qatl. Fitna is worse than qatl, worse than killing or murdering. What is fitna? Fitna primarily means persecution. Because the kuffar had been persecuting the Muslims, they had been beating them. So actually now, they deserve it. Number two, every condition in, it, in which a mu'min, if he is placed in that environment, he feels difficulty to practice Islam. It is fitna. The whole system, political, social, economic system, which is not based on Islam, which is not under the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is fitna, it is fasad, it is rebel against him, rebellion against him. So one fitna to ashaddu min al-qatl. وَلَا تُقَاتِلُهُمْ إِنَّ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ But don't go to fight against them near the sacred mosque. You have to keep the sanctity of the of Baitullah. Hatta yukatilu kumfi. Till that time that they, they go to war against you near that mosque. If they themselves injure the sanctity, now then you are also free to retaliate. Fine katalukum. If they fight against you near the sacred mosque, fakhtuluhum. Then kill them there also. Kazalika jazaul kafirin. Such is the reward for these kuffar, for these unbelievers, for these who are opposing the deen of Allah and the messenger of Allah and his mission. 
فَإِنْ اِنْتَهَوْا Then if they desist, if they leave, if they change their attitude, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That is, they also submit. Submit before Allah, submit before His Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah is forgiving and merciful. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ Now when this phase of your struggle has started, continue this war. This war will be continuous. قَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ Till such time that all persecution ends, all fitna is finished. And what is the second meaning of fitna which I told you that is clear from this ayah? وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ What is the ending of this fitna? That the deen should become for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole system of life should come under the deen of Allah. Under the supremacy of the divine law. That is the fitna. Unless the whole social system is under the supremacy of divine law. It is under the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The real sovereign of this universe. Till such time, although there might be peace, apparent peace, it's fitna, it is fasad, it is rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the duty of the faithful who believe in Allah and really believe in Allah, who really believe in Sharia, that to establish the deen of Allah and to impose the rules and regulations of the deen of Allah, they have to go to war and they have to continue their battle, their war, till that fitna is finished. Until the whole system, political, social, economic system comes under divine law. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ فَإِنُ انْتَهَوْا فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ And then if they desist, if they give up this opposition to the deen of Allah, then there should be no aggression against فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Except against the unjust against the evildoers, against the criminals. But when they give up and they surrender, then there should be no transgression against them. Ashaharul haram or bisharul haram. The sacred month is for the sacred month. If they have injured the sanctity of the sacred month, just as the sacred mosque, now the sacred month, Ashaharul haram, if they go to war against you in the sacred months, then you can also go to war against them. If they have violated the sanctity of the sacred months, well, nothing will stop you. You have to retaliate. Asharul haram will be sharil haram. Well, horobat kisas. There should be equitable retaliation in all such sacred matters. فَمَنِ اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِبِسْلِ مَا اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ If somebody is committing aggression against you, you also be aggressive against them. Just in the manner in which they were aggressive upon you. But taqullah wa alamu anna Allah maal muttaqin. But in during all this process, never forget Allah. Always have Him in your mind and heart. Have His taqwa within your hearts. Regard Him. Think. You must always think that He is seeing you, and you are responsible. You don't break any divine law. But taqullah wa alamu anna Allah maal muttaqin. And you must know and keep it in mind always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only with the muttaqeen. That is his help. That, is, that will be only if you have taqwa. If you don't have taqwa, you can't, you can't hope for his help. Even during war, as I told you, you are not free to do whatever you like. No. The moral law has to be kept in mind. All the divine injunctions regarding war and and battle, they have also been kept to be mined. Now the second strand of jihad fi sabirillah, here it is mentioned in only one ayah, and then you will find, you know, gradually. And in the end of this surah, there are two sections, full two sections, which are devoted to this. For this battles, for, the, for this going to war, you need money, you need funds, you need arms. And arms need money. So along with your own lives and your bodies, you have to contribute your money, your wealth. 
and expend in the cause of Allah, for the way of Allah. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِعَدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّحْلُقَ And don't throw yourself with your own hands in disaster and ruination. If you are behaving miserly with the deen of Allah, what is it? You are actually throwing yourself in the fire of hell. So don't throw yourself to the ruin, ruination and disaster of the fire of hell. If you don't pay, if you don't contribute, if you don't spend for the cause of Allah, actually you are throwing yourself as if in the hell, in the fire of hell. وَأَحْسِنُوا And do good. Your Islam should be a beautiful Islam. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do good deeds. Now again, this was an interpolation. The subject of Hajj had started. But you know, in between these injunctions regarding going to war, very important. And now all the instructions about the manasik, about the rites and rituals of Hajj, they are coming. And complete all the rites and rituals of Hajj and Umrah for, for Allah. Because what goes for Hajj and what goes for Umrah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For, for the sake of his player. Wa atimmu itmam to complete. Once you have taken to Ihram, once you have made the intention, now you have to complete all the rituals. Fain Gohasirtu. If you are obstructed, if you are prevented, somebody in the way stops you, you can't go to the to Makkah Mukarrama, then offer to Allah for Mastaisra min al Hadj. Then whatever sacrifice you can offer, you offer there and then, which you had to offer at Mecca. But because you have been obstructed in the way, here you know, you can offer the sacrifice. And don't shave your heads unless that sacrifice has reached its place. You have to send that sacrifice towards Mecca and wait. Till such time that you think that the sacrifice now could have reached Makkah, that's the place of that sacrifice, now you can shave your, your heads, that is, now you can finish your ihram. And then whosoever amongst you is ill or sick, and there is some ailment in his head that needs shaving, فَفِرْيَةٌ مِنْ سَيَامٍ so you have to do the redemption. That redemption can be done through keeping fast, fasting or sadaqatin, giving alms, or nusuk, or another sacrifice. That is called dame jinaya, because you are contravening, contravening the law. Here you have to present a sacrifice additional. Faiza amintum. And if, if you are in peace, now you, are, you have reached Makkah. So whosoever avails with performing Umrah before Hajj, he should also again present an additional qurbani, an additional sacrifice for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is according to Imam Abu Hanifa, this is Dameh Shukr. Because before Islam, in one journey, only either Hajj could be performed or Umrah, not both. But in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easier for the Muslim Ummah. If you are performing one journey, but you can do, first you go and do Umrah, then you open your Ihram, or you can continue it also, that is Hajj al-Qiram. And if you have opened your Ihram, finished your Ihram, now you are staying at Makkah as a normal citizen, then it is called Hajj al so this additional ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for you, that in one journey you can perform Umrah as well as Hajj, for that you have to present a sacrifice. فَمَسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْحَجْ فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَسِيَامُ سَلَاسَةِ أَيَّامِ But there can be someone who cannot afford to pay for the, for the sacrifice, can't purchase the goat or the sheep and so on. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ Who doesn't find? فَسَيَامُ سَلَاسَةِ أَيَّامٍ فِي الْحَجِّ Here again there is fitma, there is filia, that is redemption. And that redemption is 
थ्री डेज फास्टिंग ड्यूरिंग द हज व सबाकिन इज आर अजातुल एंड सेवन मोर वेन यू गो बैक टू योर हाउसेस योर होम्स तिल का शरतुल का मिला टेन डेज फास्टिंग वुड टेक द प्लेस ऑफ दैट हगी ऑफ दैट सेक्रीफाइस अशरत उन का मिला जाल मल्लम यकुल अहलू हाजुर मस्जिद हराम एंड दिस इज ओनली फॉर दोज पीपल हुज फैमिलीज आर नॉट सेटल्ड नियर दी दिस सेक्रेड मॉस्क हुम वी कॉल आ फाकी हु गो फ्रॉम आउट साइड वर्ल्ड टू परफॉर्म हज बट देयर यू नो पीपल हु आर लिविंग एट बटका they they need not give this this sacrifice additional sacrifice but taqullah have regard for allah have fear of allah wa alamu and keep it in mind anna allah shadidul iqab that allah is very severe in punishment don't contravene these laws these laws are to be obeyed al hajj wa ashru malumat the months in which hajj can be performed are very well known فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجِّ so whosoever has made a firm intention that he is to perform hajj he should know فَلَا رَفَسَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ that during this period when one is in ihram there can be no sexual indulgence there should be no obscenity in speech there should be no jidal there should be no fighting quarreling or arguing with each other wa ma tafalu min khairin ya'lamu Allah instead of these things you have to do good and whatever good you do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know it it will not be it will not go in vain it will be in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will reward you wa tazawwadu and have the provision with you fa inna khaira zaad at-taqwa and the best provision is taqwa You have all the money with you to spend there, but there is no taqwa. To what avail? You get nothing out of it then. So you must have taqwa. The first thing, the foremost thing, is taqwa. But in addition to taqwa, you must have the money to spend where you shouldn't go and beg there, because if you don't have the money, then Hajj is not first, not obligatory upon you. You should have your your own, you know, expenditure with you. Don't go and beg there. Matazawadu, you must have the provisions with you. For in the khair azad is taqwa, and of all the provisions, the best is taqwa. That that is the must. That should be the foremost. But taqooni ya ulil albab, O people of understanding, have my taqwa. That is the last warning of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Laisa alaykum junahun al tabtaku fatna min rabbikum. There will be no sin upon you. If you want to get the bounty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but does it mean if you are going for Hajj and you take some merchandise with you, you sell it there, you earn some money, some profit? It's not haram, it's not forbidden. You can do it. Let us all come to the Hulun. Jab an tab tab ufat na mir Rabbi kum, faiza afas afas tum mir arafatin. And when you return from Arafat, first Guru Allah in the Masjid al Haram, then you know. Make zikr of Allah. Remember Allah in the Masjid al-Haram that is Musdarafa. I can't go into detail. When we return on on the ninth, you know, of the Hajj, that is the Yom al-Arafa. Then in the evening they return, and the night is passed as Musdarafa, and we reached. Then Mina back at the morning of the tenth. So that is Musdarafa Masjid al-Haram. Was kuru hu kama hadakum. And you must remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as He has taught you, not on your own. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has taught you how to offer prayers. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala through His Messenger has taught you the method of zikr. Was Kurullah kama hadakum? Don't invent invent yourself new methods of zikr. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has already given you the guidance how to remember Him. In kuntum min. Wa in kuntum min qablehi la min al-dawalin. Verily, before this time you were from those people who have gone astray. You had just forgotten the real spirit of Hajj before Islam. The Hajj was continuing, but the the spirit of Hajj was no more there. Summa afidu min hasu afadun nas. Then you should return from where the other people return, because you know the Quraysh, they had made it. 
that only the other people should go to Arafat. We, they kept staying at Mina. All the five days of Hajj, they were at Mina. They didn't go to Arafat. It's very hard going to Arafat, coming back from Arafat. One day journey, you know, it's very hard. They said it is for other people who come from outside. We, we are the custodians of Kaaba. We need not go outside Haram. So they remain at Mina. Here, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. So mafizu min hai nas. You have also to return from the same place, from where the other people return. Mustafrullah. And ask for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For your mistake, for your misdeed, that you had concocted yourself some ideas. In the law of Rahim, verily Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. And when you have completed all your rituals, now two or three days stay at Mina. That is for zikr of Allah. And here now, Faskurullah, now remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kazikrakum Abakum Awashadak Zikra. As you used to remember your your forefathers. Rather more strongly, you should make the zikr of Allah, not of forefathers. They have gone back. They have passed. Tilka ummatul kad khalat la ma kasabat malakum ma kasabtum. It was the practice of the Quraysh that they used, you know, to praise their forefathers. But here the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you don't praise your forefathers, you praise Allah. You, you make zikr of Allah. فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاكُمْ وَأَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَبَالَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ Very important. There are among the people who say, even in Hajj, they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Oh Allah, give us everything in this world. All their prayers are concerning this world. Give us wealth, give us money, give us sons, give us this thing, give us that thing, all of this world. Even at Hajj, they are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only regarding this life and this world. فَمَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ For such a person, there will be no share in the hereafter. Because all his intentions, they are concerned with this world, and he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goods of this life and this world also. So in Akhira, in the hereafter, there will be no reward, no, no share. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ اللَّهِ And from among, there are those people also who say, O oh Lord, O oh our Lord, give us the goods of this world also, and the good of the Akhira, of the hereafter also. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ اللَّهِ And save us from the punishment of fire. أُولَائِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُونَ they are the people for whom there will be share from which they have earned. They will be able to partake from their earnings. Why part? Why not the whole? Because it will depend upon the sincerity, the amount of sincerity. If a person is 100% sincere in his good deeds, then he will get the 100% reward. But if his sincerity is somewhat polluted, then you know the reward also will be diminished. But anyhow, of the good deeds, a person would have, if he is really praying for it, and he has the intention of having goods of Akhira, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them some share of their earnings. Wallahu sariul hisab, and Allah is very swift in reckoning. Waskurullah fi ayyami ma'adudat. Now note the same word, ayyami ma'adudat, which appeared concerning the psalm. Ayyam Madudat. Here Ayyam Madudat again appears and it is for two days or three days. But Kurullah fi Ayyam Madudat, and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, during those numbered days, that is the stay at Mina. Faman ta'ajjala fi yawmain, whosoever returns early, after only two days, fala ismale, there is no sin on him, he is not to blame. Faman ta'akhara, who delayed for one day, Fala Ismaile, there is no sin on him also. Le manit taqa, provided they have taqwa. Otherwise you might be staying for a month over there. But if there is no taqwa, 
to what avail, to what use? Nothing. So if you have taqwa, if you have stayed for two days, it's okay. If you have stayed for three days, okay. But if you don't have taqwa, you might have stayed there for a month of no avail. But taqullah wa'alamu annakum ilayhi tawasharoon. And have regard for Allah. Fear Him. Fear that you will have to explain everything to Him on the Day of Judgment. Ba'alamu and keep it in mind. Annakum ilayhi tawasharoon. That you will be gathered before Him. You will be gathered before Him. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And there are from among the people such persons whose talks, whose speech pleases you very much, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this life of this world. Some people are very worldly wise, very talkative. They can, you know, they can assure you of their sincerity. But actually they have a different character. Within them there is something else. This character is now being discussed. And this is actually the character of the Munafiqeen. And the person here actually, that is in the background, is Abdullah ibn Ubayy, the, the chief of the Munafiqeen. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ And he repeatedly calls on Allah to witness on whatever is in his heart. By God, I am sincere. By God, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever I am saying is, I am saying out of sincerity, utmost sincerity. وَهُوَ عَلَدُّ الْخِسَامِ While in reality, he is the most stubborn, quarreling person. And he is most quarreling of the opponents. Of the enemies. عَلَدُّ الْخِسَامِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّا it can be translated in two ways. When he turns his back, he goes, goes away from you after talking. Or it can be mean also tawalla, walaya. If he gets power, then what he does? Safi fil fiha. Now he goes and struggles to have mischief in the world on, the, on this earth. By yuhlikal harsab al nasl. And he wants to destroy the tillage, the crops, and the cattle. And Allah loves not, Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad. Allah doesn't like corruption and mischief. And when it is said to him, have fear of Allah, mend your ways, what are you doing? You shouldn't do it like that. When you go to the Prophet, you are so sweet. You are talking, you know, so sweetly. You are Time and again calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to witness. And now what are you doing? When you are not in His presence, your attitude is absolutely opposite. How come? But you must have some fear of Allah. You must bend your ways. His false sense of respect and honor, he makes, it makes him stick to his sin. How can he admit that I did something wrong? I can't admit. My honor, my self-respect doesn't allow me. I cannot go and accept the guilt that I have, that I have done this. فَحَسْبَهُ jahannam. So, for him, Jahannam is sufficient. And that is a very bad place, resting place. On the contrary, I told you in the Quran, it's a general practice, simultaneous contrast. When we have discussed one character of Munafiqeen, now the character of the Mu'mineen, as Salihin, as Sadiqeen, the true Mu'min. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ اتِّغَابَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And from the same people, there are those also, who sell themselves, sell their lives, Sell their money. What does it mean? They give their life. They give their money. Ibtiga mardat Allah. What for? To get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are ready to sacrifice everything. Wallahu raufum bil ibad. And surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very gracious with his bondmen, with his servants. 
یادین آمن خلو فی سلم کا او یو ہو پروفیس ٹو بلیو اینٹر اسلام اینڈ وٹ از اسلام سبمیشن ٹو اللہ بٹ اینٹر ان دس ٹوٹلی ناٹ پارشلی کافتن ایز اے ہول یور ہول پرسنالٹی یور ہول لائف شوڈ بی ان دی فارم آف سبمیشن بفور اللہ سبحان و تعالی ناٹ اونلی اے پارٹ آف اٹ پرینگ ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالی بوئنگ بفور ہم ان رکو اینڈ سجود بٹ وین یو گو آؤٹ فرام دی ماس یو آر کنٹرویننگ دی لاز آف شریا ناؤ یو جسٹ فرگیٹ دیٹ ریبا از حرام انٹرسٹ از حرام گیٹ اینی تھنگ اینڈ مارگیج جسٹ سائن اے پیکٹ سائن اے فارم اینڈ دیٹ از یو گیٹ دی بیسٹ کار یو گیٹ اے ویری گڈ بنگلو اینڈ دیر یو جسٹ فرگیٹ دیٹ واٹ از حلال اینڈ وٹ از حرام سو دس از ناٹ اینٹرنگ اسلام ٹوٹلی اٹس اونلی پارشل اینڈ یس ٹرڈے وی ریڈ دیٹ آیا افتو میں نون اب باز دل کتاب و تک فرون اب باز ڈو یو ایکسپٹ اے پارٹ آف اوور اسکرپچر اینڈ لا اینڈ شریا اینڈ ریجیکٹ دی ادر پارٹ فما جدا میا فالو ظال کم ان کو ملا خز یون فی الحیات دنیا دیر کین بی نو پنشمنٹ فار دوز ہو ٹیک ٹو دس ایٹیچیوڈ ایکسپٹ دیٹ دے شوڈ بی پٹ ٹو ایکسٹریم ہیملیشن ان دس ورلڈ ان دس لائف بھائی ہم القیامت یو ردون الا شد العذاب نان دی ججمنٹ دے شوڈ بی تھرون ان دی ورسٹ آف پنشمنٹس یا یو اللہ دین امن خلوف سلم کاف اینٹر اسلام بٹ ٹوٹلی ولا تتبع خطوات شیطان اینڈ ڈونٹ فالو دی فٹ اسٹیپس آف شیطان ان نہ لکم ادوب مبین ویریلی ہی از اے کلیئر اینمی ٹو یو فائن ضلل تم اینڈ اف یو سلپ من بعد ما جات کو البینات آفٹر آل دیز کلیئر ٹیچنگز ہیونگ کم ٹو یو فالم اللہ عزیز الحکیم نا کیپ ان مائنڈ اللہ ہیز آل دی اتھارٹی آل مائٹی اینڈ ہی از دی وائز اف بفور کمنگ آف دس قرآن یو آر ڈوئنگ سم تھنگ رانگ دیر کوڈ بی سم ایکسکیوز آفٹر آل دیز تھنگس ہیو بین ریویل ٹو یو آفٹر دس مارزا ہیز کم ٹو یو آفٹر دس گائیڈنس ہیز بین ریویل ٹو یو Now, if you slip from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the path of the Sharia, then you will be brought to the book that Allah is Almighty. Hal yanzuruna illa yatiyahumu allahu fi zulali min al-ghabab? What are they waiting for? You know, there is a weakness with, all, with many of the human beings. They go on postponing. I shall become good after some days. Let me do this and let me do this, then I will adopt the full Sharia. Before that, I have these things to perform and these duties to perform. So he goes on, goes on postponing his Islam, his actual practice of Islam, he goes on, goes on post postponing. And maybe the death takes him, overtakes him. What will happen? Hal yan zoroon. What far they are waiting? اللہ اللہ من الغمام آر دے ویٹنگ فار دیٹ ڈے دیٹ ڈے آف ججمنٹ وین اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ول کم ان شیڈوز آف دی کلاؤڈس اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ول ڈسینڈ آن ارتھ وی وی ڈون نو ہاؤ بٹ ہی ول وجا ربو کمل مل کو سفن سفا دیر بی اے ڈسینڈ حتا اللہ یات یہ اللہ فی ظلم من الغمام Well, Malaikatu and the angels will also come. Waqadi al-Amr. And all the matters will be decided and settled forever. What does it mean? Then it will be the decision, final judgment. There will be no possibility of any apologies. There will be no possibility of going back, returning to the world, of repenting, of mending the ways. Then actually everything will be decided for, for good. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَوْ لُمُورِ And towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be returned all the matters. سَلْبَنِ إِسْرَائِلَ كَمَا تَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ بَيِّنَهُ Ask the children of Israel how many clear signs we gave to them. They saw miracles after miracles, miracle after miracle. 
ومن يبدل نعمت الله من بعد ما جاءته فإن الله شديد العقاب and whosoever changes the blessings of Allah after they have come to him then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe in punishment also in one ayah actually is the reference to the first part of this surah what had they been doing with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا This life of this world has been made very attractive and beautiful for, for the kuffar. They love it. This life has shine. It, its grandeur. It attracts them. زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they mock at the Muslims, at the Mormons. Look to these people. He thinks they think or he thinks there will be another world and he will have all the bounty of Allah in that world. He is living in the hope of the other world. While we, we have all the amenities, all the luxuries, we are enjoying everything here in this world. So they mock at them. Yes, karuna min al-lazina amanu. Wal-lazina taqaw fawqahum yawm al-qiyamah. And those who have taqwa, they will be over them, above them on the day of judgment. وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابُ And Allah will give to whomsoever He will please without reckoning, without any limits. كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Now it's a very important issue. Why there are different religions, different communities? What's the philosophy behind it? This ayah is also one of the most important ayat of this surah. And I have given it the name Ayatul Ikhtilaf. How Ikhtilaf and differences in religion they appeared. So it's the philosophy of history of Quran. Kaan al ummatan wahida. All the people to begin with were one community. All progeny of Adam, they were all one community. They were on Tawheed, on Islam. They were not in darkness. They were in the light of Tawheed. Because the first man was also the first Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first Prophet. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ Now after that what happened? There were differences among the people. After Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, people divided. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشَّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ So after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised and sent the prophets who were Mubashireen and Munzireen both. They were Mubashireen, givers of the glad tidings, bringing the glad tidings to those who took to the right path. Were Munzireen and warning those who took to the wrong path. وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ And he sent down with them the book with the truth. لَيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُوا فِي To judge between the people in all matters in which they had differed. وَمَخْتَلَفَ فِيهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاتُهُ الْبَيُّنَاتِ بَغْيَمْ بَيْنَهُمْ And people who differed among themselves didn't differ except after the clear signs had come to them. They had the clear knowledge, they had the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was not by mistake. The real call was بَغْيَمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Seeking domination over each other. This domination, Adler's view of psychology, the urge to dominate, this is the real cause of differences which appear in religion. فَهَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided to those who believed to the right path in all the matters in which there was differences. There is nahi with his permission. وَاللَّهُ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صَلَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ and it is for Allah that He guides to whomsoever He pleases towards the right path. Now again you'll find the description and the discussion about going to war for the cause of Allah. Did you think that you will enter Jannah, paradise? وَلَمَّا يَعْتَكُمْ مَسَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Although to you those trials and tests and tribulations have not happened up till now, which came to those people who were before you. 
مسط ہوم الب سا افلکشن اینڈ ڈسٹریس ٹچ دیم وزول ضرو دیو شیک شیکن حتا یقول رسول ولزین عام انو ماہو سو دیٹ دی پروفٹ آف دی ٹائم اینڈ ہز کمپینینس ہو ور ود ہم پیپل ہو بلیو دی کلائڈ آؤٹ حتا یقول رسول ولزین عام انو ماہو متا رسول اللہ وین دی ہیلپ آف اللہ ول کم اللہ ان دا نسل اللہ قریب دین دی گلیڈ ٹائڈنگ واز گیون ٹو دیم دیٹ دی ہیلپ آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی از ناٹ فار اوے اٹس نائی اٹس ویری نیئر سو ڈونٹ شرک اینڈ ڈونٹ اوائڈ گوئنگ ٹو وار فار دی کاز آف اللہ یہ سنونا کا مادہ ینفقون ناؤ دیٹ انفاق اینڈ دے آر آسکنگ یو او پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وٹ شوڈ وی اسپینڈ ہاؤ مچ شوڈ وی اسپینڈ And where should we spend? Kulman fakum min khairin. Tell them whatever you spend from your money, your wealth, falil wale dain. So first, you know, they should be spent on your parents, balakrabin, then your relatives, kith and kin, waliyatama, the orphans, wal masakin and the poor and the needy, wabli sabir and the travelers. Wama tafalu min khairin find Allah bihi alim. Whatever good deed, you, good deed you will do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be knowing it. It will be in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kutiba alaykum al-qitalu wa huwa kurhul lakum. Now going to war has been made mandatory and obligatory upon you. Kutiba. Just as kutiba alaykum al-siyam. Fasting has been made mandatory on you. Now it is that stage of the revolutionary struggle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When this war has been made mandatory, Kutiba alaykum al-Qitaal. It has been prescribed, it has been made imperative upon you to go to war. Wa huwa kurhun lakum, and it is abhorrent to you. Wa asaan takrahu shayyan wa huwa khairun lakum. That is just possible. That you are abhorring something, you don't like something. And it is really good for you. Wa asaan tuhibbu shayyan. On the contrary, this is also possible. That you like something, you love something. Wahwa sharul lakum. Although it is real, in reality, it's not good for you. It's injurious for you. Wallahu yalamu antum la taalamun. Allah knows that you don't know. Ya saluna kani sharil haram ekatalin fi. They are asking you also about the sacred month, about going to war in it during that month. All ekatalin fi he kabir. Tell them. Going to war in a sacred month is a grievous sin. But, was sabdun an sabirillah. But preventing people from the cause of Allah, from the way of Allah, wa kufrim dehi, and making kufr, and disbelieving him, wa masjidil haram, and preventing people from going and visiting and pilgrimage to the masjidil haram, wa ikhraju ahlihi minho, and expelling the people of Makkah from it, Akbar or Indallah. That is a bigger sin in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal fitnatu akbaru min al-qatil. The same wordings, wal fitnatu ashaddu min al-qatil, we read before. Wal fitnatu akbaru min al-qatil. Fitna, persecution, social order. If the, so, if the social system is not under divine rule, That is much worse than killing. وَلَا يَذَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ فِي And your enemies, these kuffar, will continue fighting against you during this sacred month. حَتَّى يَرَدُّوكُمْ Till they can, if they can, till they, they take you back from your deen in istatao, if they can. وَمَنْ يَرْتَدِدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينَهِ And listen, whosoever amongst you goes back from his deen, If under this pressure of the enemies of Islam, he gives up Islam and goes back to that deen of their forefathers, and if he dies in that condition, such are the people who all deeds will go in vain, will be destroyed in, the, in this world as well as in the akhirah, in the hereafter. And they are the people of fire, And they will remain in that forever, forever. 
And now again the contrast. Some people only mentions, if there is a mention of such people, we don't have any example really that somebody went back from Islam to Kufr, to Istidad. But you know, theoretically, because it could be possible for somebody, it was discussed here. And, and on the contrary, the simultaneous contrast, in Allazina Amanu, Allazina Hajaru, Wajahadu, Fi Sabilillah. On the other hand, those people who believed, who had the real faith, and then they made the hijrah, they migrated at the orders of the Prophet ﷺ from Makkah to Medina. وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Then they fought for the cause of Allah. They made jihad for the cause of Allah. أُولَائِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ They are the people who are hoping they are the candidates for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are hoping the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. يَسْلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَبْرِ وَالْمَيْسَرِ they are asking you, O oh Prophet, now again social problems. They are asking you about wine and gambling. Pull fi hima isun kabir. Tell them, in both of them there is a grievous sin. The manafi nas. But there are some benefits also for the people. Wa ismu huma akbar bin But the sin of the both of these is greater than the benefits in both of these. But that's all. Here, only this much. This was the first instruction about these two things. The final instructions, they will, they will come in Surah Al-Ma'idah. وَيَسَلُونَكَ مَعَذَا يُنْفِقُونَ And they are asking you, what should they spend? قُلِ الْعَفْ Tell them, whatever is surplus, whatever with you is more than your needs, give it away. Give it for the cause of Allah. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ In this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes His signs, His teachings clear so that you ponder over them. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ In this world also or in the hereafter also. وَيَسَلُونَ كَانِ الْخَطِّ يَتَامَ And they are asking you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, about the orphans. قُلْ إِسْلَاهُ اللَّهُمْ خَيْرٌ Tell to work honestly in their property to benefit them is good. And if you intermix your properties and business with them, with theirs, they are your brothers. And Allah very well knows the person who is making mischief, mischief monger. From that, from that person who actually wants to have good, to make a good, good deal about the orphans. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَعَذَتَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَذِيدٌ رَحِيمٌ He would have been hard upon you if Allah will so. Surely Allah is mighty and wise. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرَانِ الْعَظِيمِ وَنَفَعْنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْآيَاتِ مَزِرْكِ الْحَكِيمِ The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter.
For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tenzim.us. You may also email us at info at T-A-N-Z-E-E-M dot U-S or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.